Good evening, everyone. I am Khadija, and you are tuned into I am Khadija on What's Up KC. And today we have a very special show for you. Um, we're going to get your engine running and hopefully get you to move in in action when it comes to wrongful conviction and the new law that was set in place August 28, 2021, that allows um, the wrongfully convicted to have an opportunity to have their cases before the court. I'm going to read that law to you, um, short part of it, before we get started, help set the stage, okay? So this is the uh, title 37 criminal procedure coming from chapter 57 um the law part is 547.031 <clears throat> information of innocence of convicted persons prosecuting or circuit attorney may fail to vacate or set aside judgment procedure one a prosecutor or circuit attorney in the jurisdiction in which a person was convicted of an offense may file a motion to vacate or set aside the judgment at any time if he or she has information that the convicted person may be innocent or may have been erroneously convicted. The circuit court in which the person was convicted shall have jurisdiction and authority to consider, hear, and decide the motion. Number two, upon filing the motion to vacate or set aside a judgment, the court shall order a hearing and shall issue findings of facts and conclusion of law on all issues presented. The attorney general shall be given notice of the hearing of such a motion by the circuit clerk, by the circuit clerk, make sure I say that clearly, and shall be permitted to appear question, witness, or make arguments in the hearing of such a motion. Three, the court shall grant the motion of the prosecuting or circuit attorney to vacate or set aside the judgment where the court finds that there is a clear and convincing evidence of actual innocence or circumstantial error. I'm sorry, constitutional error. I need my glasses on. <laughs> at the original trial or plea that undermines the confidence in the judgment. In considering the motion, the court shall take into consideration the evidence presented at the original trial or plea. The evidence presented at any direct appeal or post-conviction proceeding, including state or federal habeas action, and the information and evidence presented at the hearing on the motion. And finally, number four, the prosecuting attorney or circuit attorney shall have the authority and right to file and maintain an appeal of a denial or disposal of such motion. The attorney general may file a motion to intervene and in addition to such motion, file a motion to dismiss the motion to vacate or to set aside the judgment and appeal filed by the prosecuting or circuit attorney. Now that you heard the law, let me introduce my guest to you. Today I have Tommy Simmons with me and I have Mitch Suttup. Mitch Suttup is an activist and Tommy is a victim of the system. And so let's get right into it. Tommy, can you tell me why this law is important to you in your case? Well, yeah, and good evening, Khadija um, and Mitch. I'm gonna break down the law you just read and I'm gonna kind of just condense it real quick okay. to what has to happen. Under this law, what happens is if your lawyer, if you have a lawyer and that lawyer comes along and looks into your case and see that you have an actual innocence and another and a key word in this in this uh, uh law is R. That's your key word in this case. Or a constitutional violation at your trial or a plea. And if your lawyer brings this to the prosecutor, and it don't have to be the head prosecutor because the language in this law says a prosecutor. It don't say head prosecutor. It says a prosecutor. So once she brings this to 
or, or he, your lawyer, brings this to the prosecutor's attention that you may have a constitutional violation. So what is a constitutional violation? You know, it can be from one to 14, actually. Um, so under my issue that I had, I had several. Uh, one was a Fourth Amendment violation, one was a Fifth Amendment violation, a Sixth Amendment violation, a uh, First Amendment violation. Um, the one that was concerned about was the Fourth Amendment violation. So my lawyer, which was um, um, Brock Exposito, writes a 33-page letter to Jean Peters Baker telling her about that, that right there, telling her about the constitutional violations that happened in my case in 2009 and 1999. The case in 2009 involves a Fourth Amendment where an officer, which was a sergeant at the time, Brad Lemon, came up on my property without a warrant and attached the GPS onto my car without a warrant and then came up on my property 11 more times without a warrant to change the battery of the GPS. In the, the Valkenir case, which is the, 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 the officer that just got uh, the killed, Cameron Lamb, the charging factors in that case was, and it was the reason why Gene Peter Baker charged him is because he came up on the property and killed Cameron Lamb. And he had no warrant to come up on the property. So this is really a sufficient enough evidence to show the Fourth Amendment violation so I have to a make question. a choice. I have a question. Um, how did the law apply to Kevin Strickland that he was able to get his case before a judge? Is that a case that she, Jean just already had on her radar? Or did this law come in place because she needed it for Kevin Strickland? How did that come about? I want to say it came about because the Innocent Project brought it to her attention. And by them bringing it to her attention, Jean knew that if you bring that, like these lawyers, they brought it to her attention and told her about the actual innocence. And so that's the law, that's the issue that they used in the Kevin Strickland case was actual innocence. Now you have to remember, there are three elements under this law. Mm -hmm. And one was actual innocence, the other was constitutional error, and the other one was uh, erroneous conviction. So they felt they used the actual innocence. And actually, it didn't make no difference how suspended in time it was, because as you know, he was there 42 years. So they went back 42 years and dug up all the evidence to show that uh, obviously he was actual innocence. So no statute of limitations. Yeah, right. there was a, actually it wasn't no yeah. statute on. Right. So he, he's the first person to ever bring this law into effect. You would well, have yeah, been, he would, would have been the first person right. because the law just came out in August 2021. So, yeah. so we we had I, a meeting and okay. and you had she taken your case on you would have been the second person, right? I would have been the first person to bring well, it up person, under. Listen, uh, listen. First person I would be the first person to bring it up under constitutional error. Okay. He right. brought it up under actual innocence. So I wanted to challenge Gene and to see if this law was effective, like it's supposed to be. So I challenged it under constitutional error. I could have went up an actual innocence myself because I was actually innocent. Wait, wait. Is a reflection of this 33 page letter that your, your lawyer writes sent to uh Jean, correct? Yes, right. Okay. Everything everything that has been constitutional error from my case in 99 all the way up to the case in 2009. In 99, I was convicted and sentenced without me being without me being at the sentencing. And they sentenced me to prison and I stayed there for four years. And I never went before the judge to get the sentence. Now, 
Not only that is a constitutional error, that is a miscarriage of justice, you know, that race that uh, bringing that before the court automatically is sufficient enough evidence to warrant the, the, the prosecutor to take it to the judge. Now, the only key element in this law is there is nothing in there that says that the prosecutor, after your lawyer brings it to her attention, that she can deny the process. What she's supposed to do is take it to the judge, and he's supposed to deny the process. That way, there, if he denies the process, then you have an appeal, which it says, and you're reading things that you can appeal it. But in my case, Jean stopped the process herself because why? She knew that Judge Young was involved, and he's the same judge that found the Balkaner guilty and sentenced him to six years. So let's let's talk about the, the reasons why. Hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. And the next thing is she knew that she was the prosecutor involved in my case. That she denied, declined and denied and said that she wasn't, but we have the docket sheet to show that she was. So so before we get into that, Khadija, I want to go back and kind of frame this a little bit for people who might be watching that may not have a clear idea of, of what's everything that's being said here. The biggest thing is, is that what they need to know is anytime a, a, a you know, a, a, a police officer enters into your property and does something without a warrant, that's illegal. If there's crime not being committed. And I mean, so, and so with that being said, you know, some people may not be, be following the story all the way, but you know, the, the, the situation is that, you know, this law was that the thing that happened to Tommy was very much so uh, a situation where uh, a miscarriage of justice, uh, without a doubt, uh, number two, uh, is a situation where now we've discovered that uh, some people are being protected in the process. Uh, of They don't want to say, hey, we were wrong or we did this wrong or whatever the case may be. And, and not that it even is probably going to hurt anyone, but for the most part, they are not owning up to the mistake they made and the things that they've done. And so with that being said, go ahead. So I'm sorry, Tom. No, go ahead. Well, the, well, the, the reason why that this is being like what we call a complete cover up is because if you go after Brad Lemon and open that door on Brad Lemon, then you're going to expose <laughs> all the Brent. cases. Yeah, you, well, yeah. you're going to expose Brent Powell. Because Brent Powell gave uh, Lemon, uh, he signed off on a search warrant. See, judges don't make search warrants. Police make the search warrant. Judges read them, then sign off on them. Right, they, they have to prove it. Here, here's yeah, well, we have to have probable cause, you know, show probable cause. But Judge Brent Powell gave Brad Lemon them a warrant to come in my house to look for any item deemed to be stolen. You can't yeah. you can't give a person a warrant. It's a legal search warrant. A warrant to look for any item deemed to be stolen because the Fourth Amendment states that a search warrant got to show what you're looking for and where. And it got to, you know, specifically, it got to be particularity. That's what the law is a particularity warrant. You got to show particular particularly what you're looking for. And specific. any item deemed to be stolen no judge that I know of in the, in the, in, 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 uh, uh, as a judge will give anybody, any police officer, a warrant to do with that. And what's the unique thing about this is there was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was eight police officers that came in the house with Brad Lim in my house. And the law clearly says that before the police can have a search warrant, they have to all read the search warrant before they go in the house. And all of them got to look it over to see what they're going to look for. And if anything is in that warrant that looks like it's out of place, then that warrant must be stopped immediately. Okay. See, here, here, here's my question to you. When you were sitting in front of Jean, you and your lawyer, um, we already know that there's corruption and why she's covering up. But what was the reasonings that she gave you for not being able to take this case before the judge? Because this 
page letter is very clear, very concise. It has footnotes of where you can find the factual information and all the court documents and different things. So where did she have the gumption to say that this was not enough evidence and her team to bring this forward? What was they, her reason they, for that? Uh, reality and the reality of it, she says that uh, that there was not a sufficient of evidence. Before you answer that, the reason why I bring this up is because in this law, it doesn't give any recourse for her not wanting to take it forward. So we, we're here to challenge everything that she has brought forward. So that's why I'm asking you that question. Go ahead. Well, <clears throat> first of all, she says it's not a, enough sufficient evidence to take to a judge. Well, if it was sufficient enough evidence to convict the Balkanier and then sentence him to six years, I have the same identical issue and, and case that the Balkanier, uh, that the Cameron Lamb case had. Brad Lemon came up on my property without a warrant and attached a GPS to my car without a warrant. So that's a violation of the Fourth Amendment. The Vulcanier came up on Cameron Lamb's property and killed him without a warrant. And so both of them charged. But you have to remember from what we understand is that uh, Jean can't take this to Judge Young's because she was the prosecutor. And if she goes and set him out, he's going to have to set her out. So, well, you knew about it, too. You know, you, you knew what your, they were doing. You know what Brad Lemon did, you know. And so uh, then here's an, a, another thing that we just got from the uh, 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 higher, higher sources that told us that the reason why they won't go after Brad Lemon is because Brent Powell is a, is a uh, Missouri Supreme Court judge now. And they believe that he got to be judged for what he did in my case. And they had to give him a uh, 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 some type of confirmation to for what he did illegally. And everybody that was involved in my case at that time went up the ladder. Gene made uh, uh, top prosecutor, Knazer made judge, Kevin Harrell made judge, uh, 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 Don Parson went to a major law firm, and uh, um, um, Lemon went to be president of the FOP. All this took place at the time that they did what they did to me. All of them went up the line. And you have to remember, Brent Powell's wife is a federal judge. Her sister is a state judge, Beth Phillip and Jennifer Phillips. So no, no way in the world Gene is going to go after Brad Lemon and then Brad Lemon can say, well, we got to look. Uh, Brent Powell said, uh, signed a warrant. Then that embarrass um, the federal judge. Because her husband is so stupid that she so, gives him a, 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 a search warrant like this. So, well, so I, it don't make him stupid. It might make him corrupt. He might know what he's doing. Right. Well, and, and that's what I was going to get at. Why wouldn't, if there's so much noise around this and so much evidence coming out, why wouldn't they just want this to go away? That would be the number one question. I understand, but it would only be a mistaken in carriage of justice or, but now it's starting to look corrupt. It's so, starting so to look corrupt because they're we, we, not we, we, adhering to the law, the, to the letter of the law, in terms of the law that was just, you know, passed. Right. Okay, well, here, here's, what, here's I, the reason why. Here's here, the reason why. Hold up, hold up. Let me let me answer this. The reason why is is because if you go after this, and you got the search warrant which you normally don't have, and you have it in your hand, what Brent Powell gave them the authority to do. Now you got to say, well, how many times did Brent Powell give them warrants like this? And so let's yeah, find you gotta out. You got to go back and look at all the warrants. Yeah. So, so now it opens Pandora, it opens Pandora's box, and that's if people other other you know people who have been in the system uh, realize that, and they went before this judge or had a warrant for this judge. Now it can so, open Pandora's so let's box. Look at it. Let's look at this angle that if. If she had taken your case before the judge, then that would open the door for so many other people. So my question would be, why would you enforce the law 
or be so supportive of a law that you don't want to push from any other angle? Is it just your case that has too much corruption in it? Or is it the fact that, again, like if your case does go forward, so many other people will have to have the same um, treatment given to them, their cases looked at. They have to open up the cases, yeah. And in my opinion, I, I think it's both, but I think it's probably the latter because they don't want to open Pandora's box. But well, Tommy has so much information and so much corruption involved with his case. They're going to have to do something because this is not going to go away because they can do it to one. They can do it to all. Well, you have to remember that under oath on November the 6th of uh, 2011, Brad Lemon took the stand and told them in open court that he had done this numerous numerous times. of times yes so he did say that now, so now they know that they would have to go back and dig through all his cases like they do in galuski and find out all his cases who he'd been involved in and then we know that he was uh in an affair with the prosecutor so you have to go in and see how many times that don parsons and charged people and use brad lemon as her witness without disclosing that her and Brad Lemon was either friends or they was lovers. Either way, even if you was friends, which he <laughs> sent out an internal affair investigation uh, that, Fort that Forte called down on him to have him investigated. And in the investigation, he says under oath that him and the prosecutor was friends. Well, in my in, at my suppression hearing, and she used him as her witness, they never disclosed to the court or to my lawyer that they was friends. And that's a that's a conflict of interest, which overturns your case. And that was a major factor in the Lamont McIntyre case, which got him relief. Not all that other stuff about uh, the uh, Galuski was fooling with his mama, uh, this, that, another. The sole factor reason why they overturned that case is because the prosecutor and the judge had an affair, and they didn't disclose that. And, and, and they need to solve those two murders. But but here's a question as a student, okay? Because I'm always, Mr. Miyagi, I'm always in the, the student chair. So um, I remember you telling me that when, once a person in authority knows that a crime is committed and they do nothing about it, then, then there are certain recourses for them there. Is it possible that we could pull that about because of the lack of, of Gene wanting to take this case forward, your case, which you have two of them um, in front of the judge, wouldn't that be, um, let's say, a, a way to bring about some kind of recourse for her for not doing that? Because she is very aware that a crime was committed to you again. She was the prosecutor on the case. So, can you tell us what that, what part of that law I'm trying to cite? Because I'm a student again. It says no the law says the law that. says that if you bring something to someone that's in authority to correct it and they don't, then they just as guilty as the people who did it to you. That's what the law says. And okay. so we brought this to her attention, and. Uh, if you and so what I did was after me, you and Mitch and all of us and uh, Rodney Bland, um, uh, Darren Edwards was on, yeah, was. Mm -hmm. and um, uh, we was all there in the meeting with her, and um, I asked my lawyer to contact them after it was over with, and asked them to give us something in writing for her denial of not taking my stuff to the judge. And which we know that the, the judge said she would have to take my stuff too. Let's make this clear. Let's make this perfectly clear here. Who she would have to take my stuff to is Judge Young. So she would, if she was to do what she's supposed to do, doing right, and took this to Judge Young, it would have to be an overturn because Judge Young can't find the Valkyrie guilty and then say that Brad Lemon's not. And they did both of them did the same act of illegal uh, illegal act. And so she knew this. And we understand that her and Judge Young are very, very, very good friends. Mm -hmm. We understand that. One thing so, I want to stay, interject. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Tommy. Go ahead. Now, I was going to say, one thing I want to interject is the fact that uh, you actually had a conversation with the gentleman that wrote the law uh, for 
this bill in in um that's inactive right now. That's I'm sorry, that's active right now. What did that gentleman tell you? He told me that it, I was completely that, right. That, that, that quick, because we're we're about at our time capacity. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. So, what did you say? What did you say, Kadisha? I said we're we're about at our time capacity, and I do want to, to if anybody else have a case, I want them to have some kind of instructional. We'll end it with what kind of instruction they need to do in order for them to utilize this law as well, because. Again, I think it's important that people understand that they have the ability to go before Gene with their cases as well. So answer that let, question. Let, and then we're let me answer about that question. Let me answer that question for what I what the letter that we got back from her. What we understand is Gene is not going to uh, address constitutional errors because the constitutional errors falls back on prosecutors and judges, and most prosecutors and judges are her friends. And she's not going to go against them. So there's many, there's hundreds of people is down in the state joint right now that's going to be there. Even if they get a lawyer to come and bring their constitution there, she's not going to address it. So this is what we didn't learn from her conversation. Well, we've learned that from her conversation, but I think it's important that people understand that the law provides this and uh, with enough pressure, at some point she's going to have to utilize the law or get out the way. Well, let me say this here. 547-031 is one of the best laws that I have seen in Missouri that came down from Missouri. And the reason why it's one of the best laws because at one time, if you took a plea, then you waived all your rights and you couldn't challenge it if you found something out later on that this uh, uh, your constitution was violated. Well, this law clearly states and it says a trial or a plea. So that means that you can challenge a constitutional error even if you took a plea. Now, she puts in a letter that she looked into my case two different times and uh, there was nothing there, blah, blah, blah. And she told me that she couldn't do nothing because I took an alpha plea and I weighed all my rights. Well, when this new law came in effect, that superseded that. So now what you got to say, Gene, and so now she said, well, you don't have sufficient enough evidence. Well, that's a lie. Do you have any any final words on that, Mitch? Yeah, I mean, I I just think that this is like, once again, I can't, I can't we can't say this more than, than enough, but this has been a, just a total miscarriage of justice. And um, there's elements of corruption here, without a doubt. They need to fix this. They need to handle this. And I know they probably, some people are going to probably be watching this and share this or whatever the case may be. But once again, I'm going to say what I always say. If it can happen to one of us, it can, they can try to do it again to some of us or others of us. And so we need to stand in the gap and basically, you know, create a process to go before these guys or, or create something that's going to basically bring help, motivate them to bring this to, back to the courts again, especially when we know it's constitutional errors or, you know, uh, a miscarriage of justice. Well, one thing, let me say one thing. The only good thing about my situation that came out in my situation was that I took this issue to Forte uh, when he was the chief of police and he did the right thing of doing what he did. And he uh, uh, investigated and kind of found out that he knew that I was set up by these people and uh, they lied and they made false police reports and they uh, approved their own reports when they wrote them and everything. And so he okay. found all this. Out. Okay. So my final words is this, um, you know, I always have final words, but these are going to cut deep. Um, I don't know Jean Peters Baker personally. I just happened to sit her in on that conversation about, you know, um, her bringing your case forward through this law. But I do know Jean has been in office for a very long time. And the first term wasn't a very good term. Um, the second time around isn't any better. And I know that she can do a lot better when it comes to justice. And me personally, I'm going to see to it that other people try to bring their cases forward so that we can utilize the law and she can do her job. Otherwise, just step out the way and let somebody else who is willing to weigh the scales of justice in the proper way so people can get what they need, which is justice and reparations at the end of the day. Um, the Constitution is a strong document, one through 14. 14 circumvents all of them. Whenever your human and civil rights are violated, 
there ought to be something done about it. And so that is my word to you, Jean Peters Baker. Do your job. It is incumbent upon you to do your job. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to lose friends, but we're not in it for friends. We're in it for justice. Do your job. Those are my thoughts. I think that a lot of people down in the state joint should write the governor who had this bill into law and ask them to force her to look at people's cases that got constitutional error and then instead of just put it to the side. Probably should be writing the Bar Association too, you know? That is our show. We had a good time. Um, I hope this educates a lot of people out there. Good night and see you on the next one. Program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association. 